Checky and welcome back to my channel. We talked about episode three, part one, part two. Here's part two, and um, I I uh, wanted to show you something I did. I, I don't want you to call me a liar because I said, "Oh, we're going to move on to the building on the right," and I never do that. An artist's mind's a little scattered. A little pfft, can't talk. An artist's mind is a little scattered sometimes. At least mine. Um, and I noticed that with artists, like. Messy offices, scatterbrain, because we're always thinking, we're always not just about the work that we're <laughs> working on, but it's like anything else that you know, we want to work on. And um, anyway, I, I want to show you a little something I did that I thought really is going to uh, liven up the buildings I've been working on. And I'm going to highlight a little bit on the one that we saw in the last episode, putting a little, a little of that green tone, earth tone, dirt, mold, all that stuff that you see on buildings. So I'm going to go ahead and show you this real quick and uh, go into the next part of this episode uh, where we uh, do the building I actually said I was gonna do. There's my dirty, dirty, dirty palette. Man, look at that. You'll see that a lot with painters, artists. Okay, so this is why I, 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 instead of doing wood there, I got wood here. Um, I decided to do like these cloth, I don't know if you call them tarps or, um, what but uh like gazebo not gazebos what do they call them uh overhangs you know of various kinds so i put in some color there and i really love it but I, I do need to do a little bit more and in order to kind of work on those um i'm gonna go to my little paints in here don't want to show any brands and stuff we gotta be careful with good old-fashioned copyright law it's been around for 200 years um so i'm looking for some grayish color uh i could i could mix a little white and black i guess um i i need to shadow these in a tad and highlight them and and, and that's a, a little uh, another little thing I thought maybe to show here when you're when you're shadowing uh and highlighting that's that's a, that's a really really uh, what makes things look more three-dimensional, more realistic. Uh, we talk about the fantasy appeal of this. Yeah, uh, the, 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 when I say fantasy appeal, the sky is not like a visual sky, okay? Um, and, and, and this is not meant to be what's called contemporary realism or hyper Look at the, my camera going everywhere. Let me prop my hand there. Uh, it's not meant to be, uh, you know, exactly how it would be in, in real life. And I like hyper-realism and contemporary realism and all that stuff. I just, uh, it's not my passion to want to paint something, um, which uh, yeah, I've tried before on a, on a piece. I did like a wave before to make it look very real. And um, while I like things to look realistic, the hyperrealism thing, I, I guess if I focused on that, uh, I suppose I eventually take some classes and I, I, I get it down and learn it. I don't work off photos all the time. Hyperrealism, I think you, you're exceptionally good if you can go straight off of uh, memory. That'd be amazing to see someone just off of memory do a hyperrealistic thing. But anyway, um, it, it, it kind of is not to me. I mean, might as well take a take a really good photograph. To me, I want something to be larger than life. That's my style, and that's why I like this type of um, painting because I feel like I can do something a little larger than life. Just really, you know, uh, exceptional in terms of something you wouldn't see every day. I mean, I go out and I love nature. Everyday things can be beautiful. Just absolutely beautiful. Um, and their art appreciation surrounding that, of course. And just personal appreciation and 
whatever uh, type of appreciation. So I want something that's going to be, like I said, a little bit larger than life. So what I'm doing here is make it give the illusion that these posts and stuff are pinching into the uh, cloth material that I guess would be adorned on this thing and some using a little bit of just dulled black paint with some green some white just to gray it I really just want it to have this shadowed form around where the post would be I'm gonna have to go back and re-highlight it okay so I'm just showing you that here trying to Like I said, um, add in some dark where it's needed and more dark where it's really needed more, like right here, because it's closer to the edge of the building. Likewise, over here, got to do a little bit of the same. I can use some of the same here too, because it's mostly just gray. Get in there real close and just hold it. So what I got to do is there's a uh, the real small brush that I got here. And I'm home. If you hear my daughter come in, it's because she's home from school today. And I have an appointment at any rate this morning, so I get a little time to paint, which is awesome. Always use your time wisely to be an artist. I'm, I'm finding I have to really budget my time. And I even get up sometimes super early in the morning. I don't sleep in anymore. I want to be productive. Um, and what did Ben Franklin say? Early to bed... And early to rise makes a man healthy, wealthy, and wise. Very true. I'm a history nerd a little bit. I don't know everything about history, but I know enough to quote some things. And Actually, what I studied in school was political science, but it's basically a history major and incorporated a ton of history. All right, so we have these uh, various overhangs now where I'm just shaping them. So they were much more green before. You're going to be like, whoa, you just lost all that beautiful color. Oh, yeah, I did for a minute. Because um, I, need, I need to put in some dark or needed. And as you can see as I go back, you're going to need it as you uh, develop these. Uh, we'll just call them assets in the painting or characters building structures in, uh, in graphic arts and uh, movie making. I think they call them assets. And I'm going to get another little small brush, kind of like the one I just had, that's cleaner. Where am I at? I'm going to have to mess. I always mess with the brush a little bit, too, with my fingers to get it uh, prepped for painting. I'm going to get some green on this one here. I may have to mix in a little bit of... Um, lighter color in it just for it to work and roll the brush around what I'm doing is just kind of rolling it around getting the brush nice and round and I might not be able to use this one because I didn't use any conditioner or anything to clean it well since last time but I got this green on here it's really gonna be much brighter and I'm just trying to I'm not sure you see that um, do this so i'm gonna i'm just gonna do a little bit more here and end it because i'm at about seven minutes in and you can see where the light's gonna hit right here so you want to make sure you get some back in there get some more of this just straight green color on here because really oh, when you're painting this is all wet now i was able to paint over it because it was dry and we have dark paint on here you get to work it in and blend it and go back you might have to get a little, little bit of white on your brush Okay, um, in order for it to come out. Um, but the point is here is to liven up a part of the painting uh, that I think was cool as far as it was. It was cool enough. See how the white did that? I might have to, again, go back with some darker color to define some things here. But the whole point is to work this... Uh, green into here so it looks like some type of material pinned onto the building in some way probably like a thick cloth they use on these things and to really build up 
these parts to look like they're on these posts, okay? Uh, it'll take some work. You have to think of the shape of the post. Always think of what's really actually there. Not just painting what you're painting, but what is actually there on the canvas does make a huge difference in terms of the physics of it, which is three-dimensional physics and three-dimensional geometry, all of which play into art. Okay, so I'm gonna end right here at about nine minutes and we will move on to this part over here. 72 look. hours uh, later. My office and um, just my studio, my, my art studio, office, whatever you wanna call it. Um, I'm probably gonna show you the way I set up my art studio, but how to set up an art studio really depends on the artist. And that's one thing I wanna talk about before I light the shrine over there that you've seen uh, in my shows before I paint. But uh, anyway, if you wanna take a look with me real quick, um, how my office is set up, I think it's just one of those things where uh, your office or your studio, wherever you paint, it should inspire you, make you feel comfortable, uh, has to get you into the feeling of creation, the feeling of um, uh, inspiration, whatever it is. So I'm gonna show you a little bit and just point out a few things and then light the candle and we're gonna paint. So this is what you'd see when you walk in, okay? Here's my door and my... I'll start from here. The kids are probably running around doing who knows what. All right, um, canvases over here. Um, uh, this is some area, area where I paint. This is where the big easel is here, weighted down. I usually use some bricks because these um, easels that you get at various uh, locations, uh, you know, they're nice. I like them because they have a, they go up real high. You can put a huge canvas on there. Let's see. I got a um, well, this one here is. I got a 30 by 40 over here and a 36 by 48. And the one I'm working on is a 30 by 40, I believe, or a little bit smaller over here. Um, actually, no, that's, that, that's smaller. This is this is uh, slightly smaller than the one over there. I have to look up again the dimensions on that one. This is a 24 by 24 this work was done. Um, got a little chest here where I store paints, a little another area where I store paints. And my desk, <laughs> there's paints everywhere. Um, it really does feel like an art studio, I think, when you walk in. I got kind of stuff hung up on the wall. That green thing there is just a hand rest I use on the canvas. I'll, I'll point out how I use it another time. Um, you can see where I keep my little things here that mean something to me. I just got some stuff from the art. You know, uh, a non, not really art, steampunk thing. Uh, unrelated, I got some things unrelated to art, can't talk. And uh, there's some things that mean something to me. Um, I used to practice law, so there's a lot of my law books in here just because I had nowhere else to put them. Uh, in case I ever, you never know when you needed to use one. Um, lots of brushes. See how I got a, a brush for everything. I don't even know how many. There's a bunch of them over here too. Some inside my desk, there's a whole bunch of them right there. I got a clean can, uh, palette here ready to go to mix some paint because this thing's getting so dirty in there. Although I like to look at what I have in there. It's, it's a reference. Uh, it's funny how the painter's palette works as a reference point to the piece uh, when you're working on something. Oils stay wet for a long time. All right, this little frame is coming outside uh, where I keep my... Uh, I use, um, obviously, min uh, odorless mineral, mineral spirits. Odorless is good for indoors. Outdoors, I might use the stronger stuff to clean something. And then there's a pallet there looking to get uh, cleaned up in the whole rocking chair. So we're gonna get back to this. We're gonna uh, light the candle real quick, do some painting. Um, I'm a quack, of course. Uh, no copyright issue there with that book, I guess. I wrote that. Um, that's kind of how I started, was writing uh, some kids' books, but I illustrated them too. And that kind of got me back into art, but I love painting more than doing that right now, maybe down the road. I'll do it again. So um, I'm going to work in this area, add a little lamp, like a street lamp there. Um, is, this is more of a brick building that I'm going to work on, kind of a um, more 19th century, because I'm trying to show this kind of old world, uh, newer world aspect. Might be an older building right here. 
maybe some newer and older back in there too. Like, obviously this place has been here a long time. And uh, again, as far as how you uh, set up your, your uh, studio, um, your office, I, I think it really just, it depends on you. And this is what keeps me kind of amped up to do my art. All right, so I will then uh, get started on this piece. Okay, I'm back. <laughs> All right, I think I've got a good angle here. Um, like I said, I'm just working on, starting to work on this building. Something to think about is when you're shaping out some objects or um, doing a structure or whatever. Um, first of all, there's, I, I call them undertones and overtones, light and shadow, and there's color values. Uh, this building here is really uh, close, and as it starts to get closer, it's uh, more detailed, darker, it's gonna have some light coming in, um, but also partly shadowed, but there'll be light down here, light in the window, I think maybe we'll light up a window here. Maybe leave the top one, you know, like uh, just light reflecting off the glass. So what I'm gonna do, is think of what brush I want to use. I'm going to kind of use just like a little a detailed brush because but it's not the smallest one of mine. Uh, I certainly could uh, use a larger one but I want to make sure I'm paying attention to my lines on this which the brush I'm about to show you I think is going to work. I just got the dang thing. There it is. Um, you can pick these up at pretty much any art store. Uh, and, uh, you know, I think it's just something good to get started. One of these, keep the line, to keep my line straight. Okay. Kind of see a little bit of what that's about. A little bit of a chiseled edge. Chiseled edges are obviously very good. And I'm also going to use another brush. Okay, make sure it's clean enough. Which is going to help me blend a little bit. So I'm going to do some blending, cleaning. Then as we get into some finer details, we'll be using some finer stuff like this, okay? Just got a few new brushes I'm excited to use. This one here too, just small, small brushes, super small. And then for the finest of little tiny details, I got this tiny, tiny little thing here. I hear a child coming in. No, I never took your charger, mommy has it. This is like the, the conundrum of having I, like phones and stuff. Everybody needs a charger. I don't have your charger. Because mine isn't this long. Okay, well, you're going to have to find out a way to make it work. Can you shut my door, please? That's like the biggest thing of contention. Where's the charger? Somebody use my charger. Don't touch it. Don't move it. What, do you, what percentage are you at? Oh, my God. All hell breaking loose over the charger. They always get, so there are, there's always that person in your house that can never seem to keep their charger like in a place they can find it. I'm like, keep it in your pocket. You know, find a way of staying organized. That's, if that's a tool you use every day is your phone. You know, we don't even have landlines anymore. Um, I do a lot of my stuff on my phone. It's like a computer. Walk, we're all walking around with these super computers. Pretty much. All right, so I'm getting some fresh paint here. Uh, go back through. I got some lamp black and some. I put a little bit of uh, uh, white, just titanium white, lamp black. I need a lot. Of, always need some white and black. I don't put lots of quantities for these type of paintings on the can or on the uh, palette that I'm using because, it, you know, like I said, it's expensive. I'm gonna put a little bit of just regular cadmium red hue on here. You know the guy hue. We like cadmium. Uh, let's see here. Uh, I think we need some more of this uh, Venetian red. Love this stuff for building. Such a good brick mixer color, in my opinion. Let's see here. A little bit of sap green for certain mildews and molds in this seaside area. Um, a little bit little raw sienna on here. 
I do have some other colors barely on the other palette. Van Dyke Brown. What time is it, Dad? It's like nine something. Okay. okay. Your iPad has a clock on it too. Is it charged? No. Is this your book? Yeah, I have one here. So, uh, Matthew just happened to come in and ask about this book I did a long time ago, Another World Dreams. Here, it's a copy for you. So I found them today, and I was like, yeah, I should put that out there. It's something, something of my art, right, Matthew? Mm -hmm. There's art in it. It took you a... It took a while to make that thing, yeah. I did it all myself, illustrated it, wrote it. It's called Another World Dreams. It has... It's a, like a, a, a poetic... It's all poetry, but it tells a story. Huh? Yeah, I've sold some. I don't know. I haven't checked them that for a long time, but... Okay, why don't you go Where's find... Where's your other book that has this, the cave um, I'll put the Young Plato in the cave one. I'll, yeah. I'll put it out there. Yeah, it's on my... Because the guy looks Yeah, like I'll show you on my Facebook page, too. There's some stuff on there, all right? Can you, can you go? Because I'm trying to concentrate. I guess you're going to stay. The great American poet and author... Mm-hmm. Oh, burnt sienna is a good color too. I got some yellows on here just to yellow some things up. Are you talking to YouTube? Yeah, we're talking to YouTube. This is going to be episode 3.2. Hi. Right. This is Matthew. You have to come around this way if you want to show your face. You won't see you. I'll tell you if you're in the camera. This is Matthew, my son. Him and Callie might come in out. Oh, there he is. Knock the camera where it's held. Okay, so I think on the top of this roof here. I'm um, not really getting anything, Daddy. You should look at the camera. Is it? Did you move it? Yeah, no, it's only supposed to be right there, Matthew. I'm oh. only doing this building, so I want it just to focus right there, okay? Okay, Daddy. All right, can you it go? It's a different one that has the black stuff on it. Yeah, can you go run along so I can talk and concentrate, please? We're not. If we do a painting together thing, that'll be another thing, okay? I know. This is a coffee booth. All right. Yeah, at least I can hang this up within my room. Not right now, but we'll figure it out later. Maybe we can use a frame or something to put it in. Well, we can hang it up on your wall, but that's your copy. That's for you. I found my other one, so I said I'd give you one. There it is. Can you shut the door, please? Mm. Matthew, can you shut my door? Oh, yeah. Please? Bye, YouTube. <laughs> that's Matthew. So he, he loves, I love him. He loves me. We're very close sometimes. But sometimes a kid, you know, when you're trying to concentrate, a little harder. I'm, I'm trying to do a little instruction here. Sometimes we'll have the kids just paint. We'll just have fun, I think. Just, you know, just let loose and not necessarily worry, worry about anything. All right, so the top of this roof, I think, has a, um, a pinning, which uh, holds the shingles down. So it'll be kind of like made out of metal of some kind. Okay! Um, it's a little white and black, just making some gray, and I'm going to Add a little green, stop green to the gray. Because these things get really dirty. And we'll bring out some of that later um, after I'm just laying in the color. Not much later, but I'm using this brush here just to put in some color. We're not detailing anything too much yet. So, like I said, this is some type of um, sheath or um, you see them on roofs where it's just the top is like this metal thing that has some nails in it. Maybe we'll put some little nail indications on this. I like how that little spark came out. Some things just happen on the canvas, and that was a lot of art. And not just Bobby, good old Bobby Ross. You not just Bob Ross that talked about some things just happen on the canvas. Okay, let them just happen. All right, so I got this other little chisel brush to put in a little more detail. I'm just gonna go straight into some black because we need to do some stuff here that's just black. There's like a little nub on there in the end. Okay, and I'm gonna redefine this edge in here. I'll be really careful with it because we don't want to overcloud that little tower-like thing that's probably the building right next to it. Um, who knows what it is, an administrative office, or it could just be a house or something. Oh, I lost that little spark. It's okay, we'll put it back. Um, I need to do that first. We're gonna put it a little more white now. Okay, it's gonna take a little white it's okay, it was a little dirty. And we had a little bit of a 
little speck here. Oops, didn't even know. You do need to make sure how you load your paint on your brush. Pay attention to how you do it. Okay, just think, you gotta think about what you're doing before you do it, or you'll just be redoing it over and over. Okay, look, there you go, that little spark's back. Um, wipe off a little bit sometimes when you need to on a paper towel, or I have lots of rags everywhere because I'm always wiping brushes off. I don't always um, use the paint thinner to clean them, and the reason why is sometimes I want to leave a little bit of that other color on there because I need it to blend together as part of what I'm doing. Okay. I'll go back and do a little bit more of this black and mixing in a little, it's a little bit of white, tiny bit of white. Um, where I just need to put some indications of the, how this uh, roofing material to pin down. I guess it just kind of pins down everything at the top. And, and it's important because it's part of the realism that I want. But this is not, like I said, we're not doing anything like, uh, this is not hyper-realism. It's kind of more fantasy-ish. But when I say realism, I'm, I'm totally remiss on that. I should have said um, to maintain the, 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 the quality of this particular thing in, in the context of the painting, which if we wanted to make buildings to look more like buildings, it's, it's really good to have a guide, like real picture of the buildings or something, um, just to kind of, let's make a divider right there. Kind of tap the brush here to make some effects on there. All I'm doing is taking a little bit of black because I've used a little white to uh, sort of uh, gray it down some and probably be a little bit more dark. All right and this is we'll come back to these some of these things. Some of it's just to the lay in some foundation there just tapping around this thing has been maybe been beaten up by the rain and the weather. Okay, just kind of beat it up a little bit like that. Make it look a little bit weather beaten. I probably need to now go back into some grays to do the same thing because of ox well, there's something called oxidization. And if it were copper in it, some of these things they use copper because it's like a pliable metal. We should also see some, some greens um, come out on here. So I'm just kind of tapping with the brush, putting a little bit more white, gray. A dirty brush. I think it will want a little bit more light to catch right here. These things sitting out near the water, I think also um, absorb an element uh, of salt in the air, okay? So some things, uh, think about the environment these things are in there's a logic to this there's a study to the painting depending on what you're doing some things are not so important depends what you're doing some things are way important like i said it just depends what you're doing okay so now i'm going to go into a little bit of this green right here you probably have to add a little touch of white to it so i'm going to add a little brown and green together a little white to it because if it's not like is this still wet uh paint is, is very you know wet on wet this painting is not a wet on wet painting because we let a lot dry but as it tends to uh go into its drying stage you can do more and these things take so long for me at least um that that's fine i'm Adding in a little bit more of this green here. I'm just gonna go straight into the green. Just I need some goes straight green too. I'm gonna tap in here as well, and we'll add to that as we able to, uh, as we're able to lighten it a little bit more. <clears throat> we can add always add to it. Okay, no big deal. Okay, this is metal object here. Like I said, it's all metal. It needs to have some shadowing just slightly underneath. I'm gonna go ahead and just use some of this lamp black here just to clarify this line here. 
It's, it's, there's going to be a slight crease right there, just a slight one. And I think what will make it more effective here is how they would kind of nail these things on here. Make it look like the same. Not getting a whole lot done yet. So we have to figure out where we're going to go here. With these slats, make, don't make them look too perfect. We'll have to probably really work on these lines as the paint dries. Just, I'm just putting the indication of where they are. Okay. And then there's something called carbon black. Super black stuff, I love it. I might have to get some of that out later. Now we wanna kinda of make it look like these things are overhanging maybe a little bit. Taps a little black next to the crease there just to make them look creased. Um, and what's enjoying, what I enjoy doing in these things is seeing them come together I kind of like building a model ship. I used to build model ships when I was a kid. Okay, put a little bit more of that right there. Now I'm gonna get this color out here to do these nails because it's really gonna stand out. Carbon black. <sighs> I'm giving you one of, it's not a secret, giving you one of my techniques. I, a lot of painters I think use this for the deep, very deep Deep, deep black, um, so devoid of color in the end. If I were to paint a canvas with this, just this stuff, it's so dark. I love it. But like I said, I think I've got to use this very carefully indicate where you can see them, these nail holes, wherever they pin this thing down. over here just to give a little character on there kind of shadow that in use it to clarify this top of this roof line not as much lights hitting on top it's kind of shading through and you kind of see a little we'll, we'll, we'll go on that we got to get some tiles done because we're man we're going a long time okay so we have to cut out some of this so it's not so long got my other brush to blend I think these tiles Need to have the. I just have it. It's a grid. It's not how it's actually going to work um, in the end. But I think we need to go into some gray and some brown, and start making some gray browns here. I'm using this um, this brush again. Okay, and I need to lighten it quite a bit, or it won't show up. Now I'm going to start tapping on, underneath here, making some indications of these tiles coming through and I guess like I said I have a grid going here just to give me an idea where I should be and I'm I'm not going to necessarily shape them exactly like that as we go off to the end kind of tapers off these these are older shingles on there just tap like that next layer all right so go back kind of in, I'm going to give it a little bit more brown this time Don't cover up that little tiny space in there because we do need a little bit of space and we can put some back in clearly by just pushing off some paint. I'll, I can use a knife too if I, if I mess up the uh, way I want it. So again, more tiling coming in. I will, I can do time lapse eventually, but I don't, not a big fan of doing shows with too much time lapse because, yeah, I'm only getting a little bit done. But just go on to the next episode. You don't have to watch the whole thing. You say, okay, where's he at next? Well, just go to the next episode when it comes up. Um, so what I'm trying to teach here is just how you just can make these effective little tiles on these buildings. Just little taps of, of a kind of a rectangular end brush, kind of a harder, it's a little bit of a harder brush. And... Um, Starts to get a little repetitive, but you pay attention, don't get tired of it. Just focus on each one. Focus. Focus on yourself. 
focus on what you're doing, okay? It'll pay out its dividends later on, I promise. Now, what I said about the knife, this is what I mean. If I need to put a little bit of line in there, kind of see this thing, a little trowel on there, kind of. Um, I don't think these buildings here were done with as much precision, so I'm just going to put the line right here. Maybe the owner did a few of these himself or herself. I don't know. I don't know. You could just imagine whatever you want. Sorry. I shouldn't, I'm not mocking. I'm really celebrating the guy. So I, I could never really be like Bob Ross in, in terms of really how I am because I think I swear way too much. And I, I, if I bleep something out, I'm sorry. I, I don't. I haven't said anything bad yet. It was just good. Um... But I'm having fun doing this. Oh, I like how that, sometimes you just get an effect that you didn't even know or intend to do. And it's and it's because the paint is a globs, I think. I call it globbing. It, it, I think it builds a 3D effect. All right, so we have to be careful because of this. There's a, there is a building structural piece coming up that way, you'll see. So we got to be cognizant of that because I want to see where my sketch is. Leave a little bit of that black lines in there is good. And I'm gonna go a little bit deeper, darker here at the end. And somehow I picked up some white, that wasn't the goal. <laughs> so, sometimes you have to check your brush a little bit. That's right. I'm just gonna, this is just the very edge of the paint. I don't know if there's gonna have a frame on it for a while or not, but probably covered by a frame anyway. It's all good in the neighborhood. Are you paying attention, children? Better be, this is learned stuff. All right, so we're, we're about 21 minutes into the sinus, all right, I'll go. So I am going to just show you a few more and then stop this and then go on to the brick on the other part. Dang, I gotta replace that. Okay, I'm gonna show you where I made a mistake right there because I didn't get it quite the way I wanted it, so I'm just gonna come here with a, just pull that paint right off. Scrape the devil out of it. What did he say? Oh yeah, oh yeah, shake the devil out of it. I'm like, there's a devil in my paper, I love. No, he was just, it's just a saying, I guess. He was from Muncie, Indiana. I wonder if anyone who ever watched this is from Muncie, Indiana. <laughs> that would be something else. Um, we're gonna have to obviously up top here kind of differentiate the uh, colors as we go. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna add a little of this brown too to this color I'm using and just kind of brown it, the browning of it is to indicate that these things are probably made out of a material back then that was a little bit different than we use now they made a lot of shingles out of wood um, tile type material uh, ceramic um, but they had a material I'm trying to think of what it's called for shingle Good old Bob. I love talking about Bob Ross. Now, some of the other videos talking about, well, I, well the other video before this 3.1, I, I do talk about this whole ASMR experience. And Bob Ross, I think, maybe was an unintentional uh, provider or um, source of ASMR. Uh, and that whole audio sensory thing it really did get a lot of people to watch a show because there's a certain it was funny it's called the joy of painting well yeah it was a joy to watch him it really was especially when you're homesick you know and you're a guy like me he was an 80s 90s kid okay 
I'm gonna get a little sentimental on you, a little nostalgic. If you love them that much, man, maybe just let the tears out, yo. Just, just let it out. It's okay. Uh, you know, it was sad that he died early uh, in his fifth. Uh, I think in his, maybe he was sixty. I don't know if he made it to sixty or not. I gotta, uh, I gotta look that up. I, 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 it escapes me right now. Just go on. Got a lot on my mind right now. Try to invent a time machine. You know, it takes up a lot of my time. Did I just say it? making a time machine takes up a lot of my time? So when I invent it, why don't I go back in time and free up that time and then do what I wanted to do? But then you change the space-time continuum. All right, that was weird. Anyway, um, when I was a kid, homesick, you know. Some of you might have been also homesick and watch them because it's like man this is so fun this is all well first of all we didn't have as many options during the day I'm a soap opera suck I'm sorry <laughs> if anyone is uh into those shows I'm sorry okay okay um you so you know you watch Bob Ross and, and you just chilled with mom or dad and or your maybe grandma or whoever I was with, my grandma raised me so I was with my Grandma, my mom was disabled, so she'd be home too. So that's why she had to help raise us. I'm gonna put the indication of this piece on here. Some like painted wood. Okay. And then start real carefully drawing in. When I say draw in, you're kind of doing that. Draw in the edge of this window pane that we need to put in here. And Get a little bit more edge on there with some white. Gotta have some real good white on there. A little bit too much. Got this chiseled brush right in here again. And as I go, I just wanna kinda of work in what's there. Just to let it, I can always work it more and more and more go over it more and more and more especially as the paint dries allows me to do more and more and more i just want to frame out this little overhang uh, window you see one kind of over here too you know it's just kind of on the side i'll just put some tiles on it just to kind of bring it out it's, i'm not done with that obviously we will work on that some more but i just want to i just want to um, frame that in right here Give you an idea where it sits on the roof. How do you say roof? Roof or roof? I guess it depends where you're from. All right, so I'm just gonna stop with that there and start getting, I'm gonna come back to the top of the roof, but I kind of really wanted to work in some of this part here. Now we're gonna do some bricks, okay? I'm gonna use this chisel brush again, uh, although that's after I need to put in some shapes. Now these are these are bricks underneath the overhang, so keep in mind that we shadow underneath. I would think some of these bricks here on the end are gonna have a little red to them because they're hit by the sun. So they're gonna be a little brighter. And then we have to like spruce them up a little bit after we're done. So these are my red bricks with a little bit of brown, a little bit of Venetian red, a little bit of the cadmium red hue with good old hue hanging out. Saying, what's up? I know you like my color of red. We have to be careful how big we make these bricks too. This will be the first one. Keep some of that formation that is, is I would say unintentional. Um, but I gotta be real careful on this edge. I wanna keep the edge really nice. And I can fix it, but I don't wanna fix it too much because, well, there's just acrylics under there. I can just wipe it off or use a knife or whatever. Let me show you how to do some. Now, as I move into the right, yeah, right. Um, don't want this to be quite as nicely reddened as that one. Why isn't the paint coming off? I'm have to, I, I think I went too dark. If you wonder why your paint's not coming off the brush, see how dark the paint is on there. Because I'm going on a black surface right here. Um, that a black acrylic paint very much on here. Just keep making some tap movements on here. Letting the brush 
just kind of dance off the canvas a little bit. And I'm gonna keep doing that as I go that direction. Just blackening it down. Not too much. There is a part of this window here. Keep in mind, there's a piece there. Um, this needs to be a little lighter still. A lot of tapping, a lot of lifting up the brush. If you do a side stroke, you'll get a different effect. If I tap, I'll get a different effect. If you swirl, you'll get a different effect. That's when you kind of twist it a little bit. So here, I think we've reached sort of the end. I'm gonna rub off a little paint there. Put a little bit of red on the brush. Cadmium red will make it show up more because reds on black tend to show up a lot more. And there's the end right there. So again, um, just some bricks. Now I'll just do two layers and then I'll Cut you loose. You can see some progress later. When you make really long videos, they can't save everything or edit it on time. And that's not true. You should have, if you're going to be doing something like I'm doing right now, you should learn what you're doing. Because I took a long time learning myself. No, I really did. See, I went way too um, deep down there. I'm going to cut off a little bit with this chisel brush right here. Use, use my finger. Scrape a little bit off right there. Um, as you see there, I need to redden this a little bit more here, so I'll tap a little bit of red on there. I mean, this is the side of the building that's not getting hit all together. You know, it's got some exposure to this sunlight. I have to fix the bottom there. Right, but a little bit of corner brick here. I want those to be a little bit more red because they're towards the bottom. They're not, they're not under, quite underneath that over, bit of overhang where the gutter is. Um, like I said, if you got too much paint, just kind of scratch it off a little bit. We can always darken in some lines later with some black or even use a little acrylic on a brush to refill in the lines. But I kind of like how this is coming out so far, so just leave it like that. Well, there's two layers of brick right there. Um, just kind of showing you how to do some things I want to work on and, and, and improve. There'll probably be a little uh, a bit of uh, this green coming in more and more. One thing I noticed with these old buildings, especially where you see, I can't do it as much on this web. I'll put a little bit of there. Tap in a little sap green. Okay, that's some of that mildewy stuff on there. I think it makes for a more effective brick. And that's it for today. Um, I probably should deal with whatever my kid's yelling about right now. But as I said, uh, I said this in the last video, be the artist you were born to be. Learn, Try to learn everything you can. I try to learn as much as I can. Each, each thing that you work on as a learning experience it should be um in, it should be an experience that the artist is involved in and the artist i love seeing the artist in the in the art and this is clearly something i'm interested in you can see from my studio office all this stuff like the ship related pirate stuff i think sooner or later here i'm going to put on my pirate gear and do an episode of my pirate stuff or wear a funny wig like you see in the intro but anyway have a great 
uh, uh, rest of your day if you watch this during the day have a good night rest of your night if you watch it at night but either way um, paint as much as you can if you love to paint or if you love watching it watch as much as you can to get that cool ASMR experience or just for entertainment alone but uh, at any rate, I, I'm really happy for anyone who watches this. I, I just, I really love the fact if anyone subscribes or likes or comments. I don't really care if, if you say negative stuff. Say whatever you want, okay? But I love the positive stuff, of course. Take care, and I will see you later.